the agony of a population living in constant fear of an imminent deluge downstream an aging dam. Water is a vital element that sustains life on this planet Earth. Our ancestors developed reservoirs to store vast amounts of water to support civilization. The structures erected for the purpose are called dams. Over the years, the size and shapes of dams have undergone tremendous dimensions and their purpose diversified significantly so as to include power generation. But are we asking too much for nature and making the most beneficial discovery of all times the most potent water bombs? The mighty Western Guards guarding Kerala, the southernmost state of the Indian Peninsula. It is the womb of 44 rivers, including Periyar, the longest river of Kerala. It is across this river, the ever hundred years old ailing Mulla Periyar Dam is haplessly awaiting its inevitable destiny. An imminent deluge which may spell the doom of an estimated 2.5 million inhabitants downstream. And what is more alarming is that its days are numbered and the nightmare may turn to a reality at any time. Not only the local population downstream, but a host of cities and townships, along with all their progress, are in peril. In the event, the inevitable happens. The story of Mulla Periyar Dam dates back to 1895 when it was constructed across the river Periyar in crude lime surki mortar at a time when dam engineering was in its infancy. The main dam has a length of 366 meters and a top width of 3.66 meters, base thickness of 44.2 meters. The height of the dam from the deepest foundation is 53.64 meters. The gross capacity of the reservoir is 15.662 TMC. The 244 kilometer long Periyar is abundant with 435 TMC of fresh water per year. It originates from Shibigiri in the Western Ghats at an elevation of 2,400 meters from sea level and joins the Mullayar downstream at an elevation of 850 meters. It is at this elevated juncture the Mulla Periyar Dam has been built for the noble cause of catering to the irrigational needs of the neighboring state of Tamil Nadu under a 999-year lease agreement. It may be noted that the agreement was entered into by the then Maharaja of Earthswild Travancore, His Highness Sri Vishakam Thirunal, with the then Madras government as much as 61 years prior to India got independent from the British, and that too for 999 years, a duration unheard in the history and unfair by any standards. In fact, it was a benevolent agreement between the two states. The agro producers from the land irrigated by this water have been serving the food needs of Kerala in a significant manner for years. A callously entered subsequent agreement by the two states allowed the Tamil Nadu to generate electricity using the waters of Mulla Periyar. However, the fact is that the total economic advantage for Tamil Nadu is stated to be as much as rupees 7,250 million from agriculture and power generation per year as compared to the meagre annual income of rupees 1.03 million for Kerala by way of lease rent and fee while risking the lives of 2.5 million people. Greed is just human. But what happened in the case of this dam is that it was stretched beyond limits and no one is bothered about the fact that the dam was aging and weakening by the passage of time. So far, 
so good. But it's like milking a cow beyond its age and productivity. The structural weakness of this dam, which has outlived its lifespan by several years, was evident from its very inception. Even the British engineer Penny Kewick, who designed the Mulaperia Dam, had not guaranteed more than 50 years lifespan for it. It is true that there are more than 120 large dams that exist in India today, which are more than 100 years old. But the grim reality is that all these dams which have outlived their lifespan are equally prone to failures at any time, according to the experts. It is estimated that 85% of all large dams, numbering about 40,000 all over the world, would have passed their projected lifespans by 2020, with the majority in the US and China. And here is a dam which is 100 years old, leaking from head to tail. Built of lime surki concrete, a very inferior concrete, constitutes almost two-thirds of the dam's core. This concrete, categorized as M5, is much lower in strength compared to M30, being used for major dam constructions, like that of the Idiki Arch Dam downstream Mulla Periyar. M30 concrete has almost six times the strength of lime surki concrete used in Mulla Periyar Dam. Over the years, the strength of the surki concrete has further come down to the continuous leaching of lime from the dam's core. The downstream deteriorated condition of the dam was exposed when the water level went to 109 feet. No repairs can be done below this level, since there is always water below this level since 1895. Even though two attempts of grouting were attempted in 1930s, in the 1960s, it was not able to completely fill the cavities formed due to the leaching of lime. Cosmetic patchworks being done on the body of this ailing dam would not make it safer or stronger because the ailments of this old dam are inherent and deep-rooted. Some specific defects of the constructions include earthquake and uplift forces were not considered in the design of the dam. No drilling and grouting were done to strengthen the foundation of the dam. No drainage gallery was provided in the dam body. Transverse contraction joints were not provided in the dam. Deterioration of the dam due to continuous leaching of lime. What makes the case of the Mulla Peria Dam more startling is the fact that it is situated in an active fault zone, which makes it more vulnerable to failure in the event of an earthquake of moderate intensity. The dispute has been going on for quite a long time. But unfortunately, the authorities, they are not thinking about the fate of poor people in four districts. Uh, let's say if something happens to the dam, uh, some earthquake or something like that, they will simply be washed away. Within a span of two days, two tremors of mild intensity occurred on 5-11-2010 M2.0 and 611-2010 M2.9 in the 50 km range of Mulla Periyar Dam, causing panic. Even though these earthquakes are minor in nature, they need to be viewed as an indication of the increased seismicity of the region surrounding Mulla Periyar Dam. Kerala is a state blessed with pristine rivers in plenty. Landslides and floods have been quite prominent in multiple parts of the state. A heavy landslide is more than enough to cause high tidal waves that can easily disintegrate the entire dam. Torrential rain due to global warming is another threat initiated by humans. Torrential rains and floods are the ones that can break any dam and global warming has of late increased the incidence of untimely rains and floods. The Mulla Periyar Dam is in no state to sustain such a monstrous downpour. Amid this lingering fears, the water level continues to rise during every monsoon. The Three Gorges Dam, located in China, which is the world's largest hydropower project, 
has reached the highest water level in July 2010 due to torrential rain, which has affected over 38 million people and has resulted in over 1.3 million people being evacuated. The dam's failure can be happen in two ways. One is due to the earthquake failure. Earthquake failure, what happens is dams, uh, this heel, heel means the where this dam stands. If you are having the water in the dam like this, this is the portion where the dam's heel will be having tension cracks. If the earthquake comes, it will actually move like this and it will break and it will fall like this or it will break in between. But in, as far as the flood is concerned, when the flood is coming over the dam, the dam will actually, uh, actually it will be balancing. The water pressure is acting like this and the self weight of the dam acting downwards. So once this water is flowing over the dam, this equilibrium will be lost. So the dam will be over top, it will turn down. Most important thing is that 40% of the dams in the world are failed due to flood. What is required for a catastrophic deluge in Mulla Periyar is a torrential rain or earthquake or landslide. The very fact that the Idiki Dam, Asia's largest arch dam built of concrete, has already lost its elasticity significantly. Losing elasticity is a major limitation of concrete technology used in the construction of modern day dams. As such, the Idiki Dam downstream with a storage capacity of 2,000 million cubic meters is in a critical state, which adds to the gravity of the catastrophe. In the event of the collapse of the Mulla Periyar Dam, it will spell the dooms of the lives and properties of over 2.5 million people living downstream. In fact, as many as four districts, namely Idaki, Kotev, Ernakulam, Alapura, and many towns and cities downstream, including the emerging commercial metropolis of Kochi, will bear the brunt of such an eventuality in unimaginable proportions. We should uh, uh, prepare a comprehensive disaster management plan for uh, facing such a disaster. For that, we have to carry out a systematic study of the uh, geographic area that is going to be affected by uh, this particular dam failure and on the basis of that detailed study we have to identify the spots uh, where we will have to uh, put warning uh, system and we have to identify the places where the people uh, can be accommodated uh, uh, in, in the case of an emergency. The deteriorating condition of the dam and the resultant panic among the people living downstream prompted the Kerala government to appraise the central government of India about the state of affairs. The children go to sleep every night, fearing unpredictable flooding. The recent years witnessed a spate of massive public uprisings on the issue. The agitation for a safer Mulla Periyar is now 1,500 days old. Shaji P. Joseph, our main demand is towards giving protection to the life and assets of human beings. No one can deny the people from these rights, as it falls under the fundamental right of the Indian constitution. The issue always had its political overtones, leading to a lingering political and legal tussle between Kerala and Tamil Nadu. The issue is already in the Supreme Court of India, but the crucial question is whether the dam will last till the legal and political battle ends. Central teams inspected the dam a few times and suggested some remedial measures, but this had not helped to allay the worst fears of the people. The teams also recommended exploring the possibility of locating a suitable site downstream of the existing dam for the construction of a new dam. 
However, for reasons unknown, this proposal was not pursued. Instead, what has been going on was ad hoc strengthening measures on this ailing dam. The dam failure killed not only human beings, but also killed thousands of species of birds and snakes and animals. Definitely it will affect the ecosystem of the state and uh, in future it will definitely make a very drastic change in environment of the state. Recent history reveals that at least one major dam failure occurs every year somewhere in the world. There have been more than 2,000 dam failure incidents across the world since the 12th century, but not as big as the existing ones, causing damage worth millions of dollars and loss of thousands of lives. Even modern day dams constructed with far more advanced scientific and engineering skills have collapsed, spelling the doom of millions. Some of these disasters have proved that dams are deadlier than a nuclear bomb. One of the horrifying examples in the recent past is China's Bangkyo Dam disaster in 1975, following heavy rains and floods. As many as 62 dams collapsed in a disaster, claiming over 250,000 lives. At least four dams may collapse if Mullah Periyar bursts, and the casualties will be 10 times the death toll of Bangkyao. Surprisingly, the capacities of both these dams are almost similar. But the Bankiao Dam was located at an elevation of 118 meters, while the ailing Mulla Periya Dam is delicately perched at a much higher elevation of 873 meters, which increases the gravitational potential energy of the outflow by seven folds than that from Bankiao. In case of a disaster, the water will rush like a bullet due to the steep, hilly geographical features of the place to reach the 100 kilometers away Arabian Sea in less than one hour through the thickly populated areas downstream. Moreover, it is scientifically proven that this water bomb has 180 times more energy than the atomic bomb that destroyed the city of Hiroshima. Another worst ever dam disaster in recent history, triggered due to a landslide, was the Vajont Dam failure in the Italian Alps in 1963. A 250 meter high tsunami caused by a killer landslide swallowed several towns with its inhabitants. 1979 Morwi Dam disaster in India and the 1996 Kokovskaya Reservoir in the Ukraine are some of the other dam tragedies of recent times. No humanly possible skills can stop these natural catastrophes, which are often attributed to divine justice, accidents and destiny. Some experts may consider the condition of a dam to be marginally safer, while others say it is not. But nature has its own way and experts' expectations and calculations may go awry. Old dams are the ones which pose a life-threatening situation for people worldwide and are expensive in maintaining. Let Mullah Periyar not turn to be a new avatar of the Bankiao Dam disaster. Let the Mullah Periyar issue be an eye-opener towards the case of more than 4,000 outdated dams across the world threatening millions of human lives. There are so many intriguing questions. Do the governments across the world have the financial potential to replace all these outdated dams? Will the existing ones survive till they are replaced? How is it possible to stop the operation of an aging old dam abruptly while it's being regularly used for irrigation, freshwater supply, flood control, or power generation. What technology can stop torrential rain due to global warming? Is the concrete technology more dangerous than Surki? Is the modern civilization destined to be washed away 
in damn disasters. Yes, the time has come to wake up and act. Let Mulla Periyar be an eye-opener before it is too late. There is no denying the fact that this aging and ailing dam is yet another example of Mother Nature being throttled and strangled beyond limit. Yes, today or tomorrow, the Mulla Periyar may prove to be the worst ever watery grave in human history. Let it not happen.